Hi guys, Ozhound here um, for my fourth episode of the Fortress Craft Evolved um, previewing the patch 8 uh, nightly builds. DJ Arcus, the developer, has now moved um, from Bleeding Edge or well, the development on the next patch to nightly builds. Bleeding Edge now is apparently um, a testing ground for him um, and maybe some close people he requests so he can test out certain features and he specifically said that you shouldn't use this if you value your saves or your worlds and to make backups continuously so I've moved over to Nightly Bill So yeah, there's been, um, I think this is 802, um, obviously it does daily changes and updates that. Um, I don't really got interested in testing or playing on the, the mainstream build because it's a month between changes and I like new stuff. So the first three episodes I didn't talk much if at all because I didn't have a decent mic. I do have a decent mic now. Um, so you'll hear me talking a bit more and explaining what I'm doing. Um, and the first three episodes was done in a single takeover four hours and it was uh, Twitch streamed as well. So talking like this and then having to interrupt myself to address the, the viewers on Twitch isn't really conducive to a good tutorial or a good playthrough um, of a game, which is what I'm doing now. So if you watch the first three episodes, um, I'm only concentrated on getting the tier one ores and the tier two ores sorted, getting the lab done, um, and getting to a point where I can now build ore smelters because these basic ore smelters are just crap. You can't upgrade them, can't make them faster, <coughs> um, and you have to. And there's not much difference between them as far as distance from research. You've got these from the start, I think, um, and then it's not very long say four hours game time which is what I did um, to get to the ore smelter but the downside of that is I need to get down to below the coal cavern to get my T3 sorted out. At the end of the last episode I ran power so now um, I'm just going to continue to see if I can find some more ore, so some T3 ores. So let's just top these up. What have we got? Lithium, iron, and tin. Let's go down the elevator. Then turns into a three by three because I've got my excavator, or auto excavator shooting off here. Not very quickly, but that's what you get with your T2 uh, power transfers, laser power transfers. Transferring at a ludicrous 10 power per second. So this is Cold Caverns, or well, just below, by the looks of it, you can see the break uh, between Cold Cavern stone and this stone, whatever that is. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention because I didn't wasn't talking, but I'm actually playing on a relatively easy setting, casual mode, which is uh, so we double the capability. I think it's double the ore processing um, in your ore smelters. So instead of four 
ores to make one bar. It's two ores to make one bar. Because this will be the fourth time I've played this <coughs> from scratch. And um, yeah, the grind does my head in. So let's see if I can find out what these are. Or has a massive issue, and that is that when you're trying to dig to an ore, you find these ore veins are all over the place, and it's just frustrating because you just want to get to the point where you want to find your unknown scan, but you can't because you're always hitting other ore. And of course, I don't have the build gun too yet, so there's pretty much no way that I can cut through, cut a path through, <coughs> yeah, so there's another one, this is unknown so that's a good, that's a good sign, let's uh, put some, blocks here so I don't get falling down when I run, I guess with plentiful ores, what you can do um, is have more of your mining in one spot as opposed to your T1s and T2s close to the surface and stuff like that, which most people do anyway. Oh, good. So I don't know where that grappling hook went, but got rid of the surface in any event. Gold. Where's gold? Search to get that bill gun too. out of power. I didn't even check that. So used to have a massive reserves of power that I never bother. Uh, where am I? Yeah. Gonna die.
Man, I want transporters. That was just frustrating. So I'm going to stop it there and come back um, when I get all these three ores. Guys, I'm back. I just um, thought I'd come back and tell you guys about the uh, sand. I haven't come across sand to a point where I've had to have it and try and es esca excavate it um, like I just did. And but I tell you, it's painful. Right, what have we got here? Small little cavern. That's not really what I wanted. Just to recap, I found some gold, as you know. Um, currently looking for lithium and titanium. Um, all in an area which is close by and relatively open, so I don't have to excavate so much. I guess I could use that new excavation tool. Um, I don't think I've got the research for that just yet, so we might not do that. And I have to dig more sand. Maybe. Yes, I have to dig more sand. that coal seems to be a massive abundance of coal um yeah we could just kill that torch maybe yeah. sand oh, sand <laughs> look what it fucking did oh my god I started playing this game, I thought to myself, when I found sand, oh, is this going to collapse? No. Good. Because sand's a fucking pain in the ass, like in Minecraft. <coughs> but, um, sand only drops down in Minecraft. It doesn't uh, spread out like this does. So this is even worse.
first thing I'm going to do is to make sure that I don't get any more issues with sand. Alright, so the sand actually flooded out from there. Where are you? There you are. Right, let's let that work. It's magic. It's gold. It's a power transfer in there. So the idea here is to get this happening. And then I guess upgrade the power because I'll need about 30 power per second down here um, if I want this stuff to run relatively quickly. This, this is going at 16 oil per minute, 0.45k. Okay, so yeah, initially you can run all three of just the single power coming down. <coughs> Some better power generation as well. Uh, I can continue this along. Yes, I think that's what I will do. If you have a conveyor turntable turn plug straight into a <coughs> uh, two, I think, let's just see how this works out, straight on into a hopper like that, what will happen is it will fill the hopper and then it just tends to get stuck. I don't know if that's been fixed in patch 8, but um, that will fill there and then I'd have one here ideally. In this case, what it's actually doing is it's pulling out as well. It, it's feeding the actual um, the turntable, so that's another downside. What I want to do, because I'm going to have this stuff come out of here, come out of here, and then go into a single hopper. Three PTGs. Where did that end up? It used to be here. Where are they? PTGs. Where are you? There you are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we'll have one there and a hopper there. This will feed batteries on the top.
worry about the fences. But um, one thing has to happen here, and then it's need to have enough power to run four ore smelters up here, and three at about 300 metres below the ground. <coughs> um, so if this battery extends out this way, then I should be able to have my ore generators here on top of my batteries, which I've only got one of, and I need copper. Copper, here we come. So this is what I don't get about these things, these batteries. It must be a density thing. They just don't transfer the adjacent low power ones. They transfer up fine. But yeah, uh, low power or high to low just doesn't work. Suck the power out of there now. No blocks to shoot. Right. Let's put battery there because we will start to transfer power to these things shortly.
unless I'd be moving that drill head. Yes, there's gold there, that's good. But I'm set in such a way that my CPH dying up until the point where you get a normal power transmitter doesn't make a difference anyway. It just dies for like two minutes while it reboots and that's about it. Um, but what I need to do is just let those guys power up. Why has it suddenly got so dark in here? That's a bit disconcerting. Before my CPH died, it was very well lit in here. And now it's not. It's like my torches have stopped throwing light. Hmm. Well, that fixed that. That fixed that. That's weird. stuff this up because I haven't got my build gun version 2 yet so if I put this in the wrong spot I basically have to work around it. So this should be alright if I put a... upgrade output hold uh, to the surface. Make a few basic lasers that'll take care of those bitches. That's going to be a little bit trickier.
battery, LAT, and that should start to heat up. same fashion. Now how is this set up? claustrophobic in here, I'm just going to clear out uh, the spitboard head room. Just bump some of these batteries up. And that should then start to backfill this Mark II. Ah, oh, the CPH is just destroyed again. It started again. CPH died and all the tor torches suddenly stopped working. That's a confirmed bug. It's the second time it's done that in exactly the same situation. Someone should set, let DJ know about that. That's another bug. Shit. So silly. So Arthur used to follow you before patch 7 or even before patch 8 I think now he won't follow you until he's fully charged so I'm pretty much stuffed down here without any power until he decides to come and get me
Jordan. Yeah, why not? God, you killed my base, and it's only like 10 minutes between attacks, even though I've been completely wiped out. I'm generating too much power. Yay! Yeah, let's see what that gives us, but I need to do. I think. Yeah, let's just do that. Simplified 10. That's easy to start with that. First things first. Six of those, which means I need about another three hundred. Four. Oh no, six. Thank you. 
this. Oh, that's the lithium. I forgot about that. Let's put a battery here. So I've got Mark II power all the way down now, which is good. Which means that these batteries should be uh, not really very healthy. Oh, that's So we double the output of our drill heads. I need to get a manufacturing plant down here because I'm sick of going to the surface just to make basic shit. Uh, but yeah, I need to upgrade these tier one upgrades for the uh, ore smelters to tier two because <coughs> that won't keep up. Lithium, I have to bring the ore up to the surface because it's only 100 meters down. <coughs> I 
magnetic force induction. I'm going to research that actually. Yes, manufacturing plant. That requires gears, servo motors, copper wires. changed crafting, the crafting. recipes for this. Crafting. Oh, I need one more. Might have to set up a whole bunch of stamp plants. That's what I did um, in my previous world. I had like five of these in a row. Just and you just dumped a whole lot of uh, bars in there and it just went spastic. Plant. I guess you don't make them that often, so. Right, let's go back down. Stupid sand. Oh, yeah, there's a full. Well, that's good. That's very good. <coughs> so I'm going to put this here. Then I'm going to grab these Mark 1 inductions off the head of these. And upgrade them all. Lift, but until I know if the cargo lift actually supports multiple stops, it's really a waste of time. I mean, I built it in my last world before it got obliterated, and um, yeah, it's, it wasn't that far down, but it just 
I don't even know if it'll share this sort of stuff. I mean, you can fall through a cargo lift, you can go down the shaft and fall through the actual cargo lift itself. So, I don't know if stuff like that um, allows power and stuff to pass through, but I, yeah, I'm not even going to bother trying. Oh, what happened there? sorted out down at about the 350 mark um, they're smelting as well got some good power down there I think that I need to address how slowly this is researching because if anything this is what's holding me up I got some good power storage now with the ability to expand yeah so call it a night and we'll come back hopefully in a few days, maybe a week, and go from there. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Cheers.